Welcome to the St. Michael Daily Meditations for Lent. My name is Andrew Grosso, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Lent is In the Garden. When Jesus faced his deepest trial, he prayed in the garden. As we struggle with our own trials, Jesus walks with us and calls us to a deeper life of prayer and commitment to God's love. As Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the third chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image, from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Here ends the reading. One of the things, perhaps the thing, that makes the trials that we experience in life so challenging has to do with our sense that these trials are often utterly pointless. There seems to be no good reason that justifies why some things happen or why others do not. There's no logic that clarifies why we find it so difficult to deal with intractable problems. No purpose in suffering. We are creatures who are governed by meaning. So whenever we encounter a situation that calls our sense of meaning into question, we can find it difficult to endure. This is why what Paul writes to the Corinthians is so remarkable. He describes for them how his faith in Christ not only enables him to endure the trials and challenges of life, but to turn those trials and challenges into opportunities for redemption. He writes, We are afflicted in every way, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are persecuted, but we know we have not been forsaken. We are struck down, but we are never destroyed. What is it that enabled Paul to engage the trials and challenges of his life in this transformative way? Was he simply a Stoic with a remarkable capacity for hardship? That does not seem to have been the case. Paul doesn't use the language of Stoic endurance to describe his trials. He uses the language of victory and even thanksgiving and celebration. Was it instead that Paul was able to see beyond the horizon of this life and was able to endure for the sake of the life that he knew was coming? That gets a little closer to the mark, but it still doesn't quite capture the tone of Paul's word. The thing that enabled Paul to engage his trials and challenges with this transformative attitude had to do with his conviction that God was at work in him and through him. He writes, While we live... We are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. Paul managed to turn apparently meaningless suffering 
into meaningful action. Trials and challenges gave him the opportunity to testify to the mercy and the power of God in his life. And this witness not only shaped his life, it shaped the lives of those who saw him surrender to God in the midst of his struggles. Death may be at work in us, he writes, but I give thanks because through my suffering, I know that life is at work in you. We are creatures whose lives are governed by meaning. And one of the most remarkable gifts that God has given to us is to share with him in the work of transforming the seemingly meaningless trials and challenges of life by aligning them to the life that God gives to us through Jesus. May we, like Paul, offer the fragile and broken clay jars of our lives to God so that he might fill us with his extraordinary power and thereby show forth his glory in the world through us. Amen. And now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.